What's going on, bitches? Yo, what's up, guys? We're back. Back from Thailand. Dan's still alive. Sort of. I'm still alive. Sort of. It was a good trip. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I haven't brought a video in about a month, mainly because we went to Thailand. Went to Thailand for about two weeks. Uh, saw as much of it as we could within the two weeks. So yeah, we're breaking down the videos, um, starting with Bangkok, because that's where we landed. Um, that's where we started. That's where this whole trip started. So prepare yourselves for a bunch of different videos that is going to have a lot of explan explanatory things. Yeah, some tips. Some tips. Uh, you know, things that we like, things that we didn't like. Uh, but yeah, other than that, let's do it. You let's ready? do it. We're taking you on adventure. Prepare to come with. You're probably going to enter into Thailand through Bangkok. That's where most flights, destinations, international flights land is in Bangkok. So we spent a couple nights there, our first couple days. To be honest, it was a part of the trip that I wasn't really looking forward to. I did a lot of research from pickpocketing to scams to the tuk-tuk scams, just like a bunch of things, a bunch of big no-nos that other people talked about uh, when going to Bangkok. And it just kind of turned me off of the idea of going to Bangkok. Not only that, I'm not really a city person. I like the country. I like. Uh, the outdoors and things like that. Um, but Bangkok blew me away. I'm gonna be quite honest, Bangkok was really cool. I think the, mo the thing I was most impressed with Bangkok was the public transit system. Uh, it was really efficient. There's so many people in the city of Bangkok. Um, I come from a city that has less than 10 million people in it. And I think Bangkok has almost 20 million people in it. And their traffic system runs better than my city. So um, we took some ferries, we took um, boats. So I read a lot into the tuk-tuk scams and um, you know, myself and me and my brother Chris were kind of like, we're gonna avoid the tuk-tuks, but I'm so glad we didn't because the tuk-tuks were an awesome experience. Bruh, oh yeah, I had too much fun in the tuk-tuk. <laughs> we even fit six people into a tuk-tuk. We did it twice actually, it was pretty funny, but I feel like in order to get that real uh, cultural shock, you need to go to Bangkok because it's a totally different city. The transit system really blew me away and I recommend guys, make sure you take the tuk-tuks. Um, I would say to avoid the scams, make sure you negotiate before agreeing to take the tuk-tuk or whatever, like talk to the driver and uh, talk about price, negotiate with them before you even get in because I think that's where people get ripped off is when they don't uh, negotiate before they get in. So that'd be my biggest recommendation or, or tip when going uh, to Thailand and using the transit system. So 
So one of the more touristy things to do while visiting Thailand is going to see temples. Thailand is full of temples and uh, Bangkok ha is home to a bunch of them. So we made sure that while we were in Bangkok, we took a tour and did uh, some of the surrounding temples, some of the more uh, well-known temples. So yeah, Thailand good. is the capital of Buddhism. Um, you know, no disrespect, but we're not Buddhists or anything like that. We are actually more Christian, to be honest with you guys. So no disrespect to anybody that is Buddhism or, you know, or- the, Buddhist, yeah. Yeah, Buddhist, sorry. Um, but you know, it was very cool and interesting to actually see, but uh, it's different and you know- Kind of, it, kind of like to what, to, or sorry to add, sorry Dan, no, interrupt, go ahead, go ahead. but kind of like to add uh, to that. So like Dan was saying, we're not, we're not Buddhist, um, but no disrespect to that religion, um, but like, to go and see the temples, it's more of just like a, a spectacle. It's more of just like, uh, you know, going to visit. Getting a different perspective. Yeah, it was really cool to see. Um, a lot of these temples are, you know, made of gold and, and things like that. And, you know, they're really old too. So if you're more in like, not so much the religion part of it, but more of like the history part of it, it's actually, you must go and see the temples. It's very Thailand. cool. It's very, you know, it is very, it's very um, inversive. Like, you know, you go there and you see all these different things that you never, you really haven't experienced before. I'm whatever. We're coming from Canada. Coming right? from American culture, like once again, you know, Bangkok offers a huge culture shock, and it, like when you're traveling, that's kind of what you want, right? You want, you want to feel like you're in a different country, and going to see the temples makes you feel, feel like, like you're, you're in, in a, a different, different country. country. One hundred and ten percent. First temple that we went and saw was Wat Arun. I really liked Wat Arun. Um, it was a lot more interactive than the other temples that we visited. It was the first, uh, sorry, temple that we saw on this As tour. It was really cool. You got to like walk up on it onto the steps. Some parts were closed off and I seen pictures and videos of Water Rune uh, from a couple years ago and it was a lot more interactive than it is now. You used to be able to walk up on steps and things like that. You used to be able to go almost to the top of the temple. With some signs up and closures i guess uh, nonetheless water rune was was really cool very interactive like i said you could you know touch it go up and and uh and walk up onto the steps and kind of be on very top of the steep steps, steep steps add, yeah very very steep The second temple that we went to was the King's Palace. It was the biggest temple that we went to in Bangkok, and it is the biggest and the most expensive, so make sure you bring cash. This place is massive, like, you know, like, to start off with, it's very packed, like, so just, you know, you gotta be patient with people, you know, there's tons of people everywhere, you know, it's very, very, like, you know, you're basically two-stepping it, and you go through a bunch of security. But yeah, no, like Dan said, a lot of people, so you not only bring extra money, bring your patience, because you're gonna need it. Yeah. Um, the, pal the King's Palace, crazy amount of people.
you know, you could be a dick and go ahead and just fucking jam your way through people, but at the end of the day, I mean, we're all here to see the same thing. So, you know, just have your patience, be, be humble. So the cool part about it was, you know, just how there was so much structures and it was, everything was gold there. Everything was just, I don't know if it was painted gold or solid gold, but you know, this place, this place is really old. So I could, it I could really see it being all gold. I mean, I'm not, I didn't really research this place before we went there. I honestly didn't even know we were going there, but being there and seeing all the, you know, the structures and the statues and just, you know, how different and cool it was. It was an experience for me to take home to say that, you know, I actually did this and I actually enjoyed it. No, like Dan said, you know, the King's Palace is a, is a spectacle. It's definitely something you must see. Obviously, there's a lot of um, tourists and things like that, but just be prepared for the big crowds. But um, other than that, yeah, King's Palace, it was- it My was... favorite part, to be honest, I'm not gonna lie. So yeah, at the end of the King's Palace tour, if you have a couple extra bot on you- And you're looking to get blessed or slapped by a fucking monk, <laughs> <laughs> you pay this guy. No. I, don't, I can't even go on because it's so funny. You're gonna see it. <laughs> Just once, slapping the shit again, out of you. Once again, no disrespect. No disrespect, to Buddhism. but I'm sorry. This was no disrespect. This Buddhism. was funny. This was so funny. It, it was funny. It was so ahead. unexpected. We were coming out of the temple and we just see people laughing and videotaping. We look over and we see this dude getting fucking slapped. Get over here! Okay, so yeah, no disrespect to, but that's just what it looked like in our perspective. We literally walked outside of the King's Palace and seen this big group literally of there was a dude. Yeah, it was a big crowd, and literally there was a monk beating the shit out of some people. <laughs> like, I mean, that's just what it looked like. From you know, obviously, sorry, no disrespect. Once again, it's some sort of you know it's blessing. An outsider's yeah, perspective. It's like a point blessing, of view. but an outsider's perspective that's never seen it before. You that's know, what it looked like. Just call like we see it, right? Anyway, guys, so the last temple uh, that was on the tour was, uh, it's very famous actually, it's a big lying down Buddha, it's called Wat Pho. Um, once Wat again, Pho. or sorry, Wat Pho. Wat Pho, Wat, 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 say Wat, say Wat, Wat, <laughs> Yeah, Wat Pho, Wat Pho, sorry. So yeah, once again, it's gonna cost money to get into Wat Pho, also big crowds, so be prepared for that, bring your patience. So yeah, if you guys have seen pictures of the big lying down Buddha online or videos, uh, that is Wat Pho and that was the last temple we went and visited. Really cool, um, once again, something that definitely provided a cultural shock and something that uh, I personally, like I said, it wasn't on my top list of things to do before leaving for Thailand, but now that I've gone and I've done it and I've seen it, We're the temples are really cool, definitely recommend it. So if you guys see um, any excursions that are available for that and you're a patient person, you can deal with big crowds, do the temples. Um, also another thing to add, be aware of pickpocketers. There's signs up at these places because they're big touristy areas to watch out for pickpocketers. And also uh, be prepared to take off your shoes and you have to wear pants as well. I guess it's more of a respect thing, no That's shorts the, the or dresses. Isn't that the King's Palace? Uh, I think it's most of the, even, yeah. all, most temples. <laughs>
One of my favorite things definitely about Bangkok was the nightlife. Started off by saying it is the nightlife in fucking Thailand, Bangkok, baby. Let's get it, let's get it, let's get it. Honestly, the nightlife was just so, so fun and so different and there's just so much things that like, you know, I wasn't expecting and I was honestly shocked. Like I was just walking around looking at everything cause I was like, like that's actually happening right now. You know, there's there stuff that was like, you know, like little, uh, I don't know what you call them. They're like uh, like uh, performances and stuff like that. Like we, we ended up coming across like these dudes that were like doing flips and like dancing and like doing all this sick shit. There's one thing that you guys definitely gotta go check out at night uh, is the big Asiatique waterfront Ferris wheel. Make sure you guys go check it out. It's definitely one of the biggest Ferris wheels that I've ever seen. It's about 400 baht to ride it. The waterfront also has a bunch of other stuff to do. It's not just the Ferris wheel. You have, you know, there's a bunch of food around and a bunch of different, um, what's it called, stores and different little markets and shops and stuff that you can go in and check out. Uh, you know, it's cool. It's really interesting. And you know, you get a little bit of the feel of the, of the nightlife and the local life, you know, kind of just living it and, you know, walking around and seeing stuff, you know, if you're into that sort of thing. A couple other cool spots to check out at night is uh, definitely Kosan Road. And uh, I mean, this isn't for everyone, but it's called the Soy Cowboy. I mean, if you definitely, you know, if you have your girlfriend, I wouldn't recommend going there. But um, Kosan Road is more of a, uh, it's like a, honestly, it's like a bar on the street, the best way to explain it. You walk around, there's a bunch of alcohol and stuff like that, but there's also food. You know, you can get a massage on the street if you wanted to. If you ever do decide to get a massage, if you ever hear this sound, feeling about this then just be aware that they're offering you sexual acts and uh, I mean sure if you want go ahead but uh, just be aware that that is a, a thing down there and it's uh, it's pretty bad actually you know there, you'll see it on the street you know especially if you're going to Thailand you'll see a bunch of this stuff just so just be aware that that is a factor and that stuff does happen Okay, so to touch up on what Dan just said, in Thailand, unfortunately, prostitution is a really big thing there. I say unfortunately, because personally I don't stand for that. Um, I understand they have to make a living and it's a really good way to make a living in Thailand. Uh, I'm sure they make a lot of money, a lot of tourists go there. A lot of people go there just for a good time. A lot of bachelor parties, things like that. Um, so we went to Soy Cowboy and it wasn't on the list of places for me to personally want to go to I guess I did a lot of research like I said going to Bangkok and I was intimidated and this is one of the places that I wanted to stay away from we ended up stumbling across it to be honest though not that I was happy to um, to end up in soy cowboy but it definitely gave me a perspective on things that are going on in Thailand uh, so like prostitution like I was saying it's a it, unfortunately it's a big thing in Thailand it is illegal however but it's not enforced like literally it is everywhere and kind of like what Dan was saying they are very aggressive it's famous for the lady boys, so there's a lot of um, guys that are girls. Did you say lady boys? Nope. Soy Cowboy, 
cool to see it, I suppose, in a way, just because it was fam made famous from movies, especially like Hangover. Uh, but at the same time, just be warned, like Dan was saying, if that's something that you're not into or something that bothers you, you don't want to end up there. Uh, but yeah, anyway, I'm going to pass it back over to Dan. To sum it all up guys, in conclusion, the nightlife in Bangkok is fucking nuts. It is literally this, this city that never sleeps and honestly, I really encourage you to go embrace it as much as you possibly can. So yeah, that's pretty much, uh, like I said guys, we only had a short time in Bangkok, as, but we made the most out of it, got to experience the nightlife, um, you know, definitely took full advantage of the transit system there and got to see how that all works, which is really cool. And uh, you know, last but not least, gonna talk a little bit more just about the city itself and also the shopping and things like that. So Jeff, yeah, Jeff's Jeff has a black and white one. What is that, a medium? Yep. Yeah. yeah, bro! Yeah, well, you got blue. I like this one. What do you got, you got one, Dan? Which one are you getting, bud? I want one. What color are you getting, Dan? How much? I buy one, so how many things you take? <laughs> we, we take three. Uh, oh, okay. Um, Bangkok, you'll notice it's actually really affordable. Um, it's very cheap. There's a lot of, it's a city, right? So there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of competition. Shops, yeah. There's a lot of shops. So I would suggest doing most of your souvenir shopping here just because uh, when we went to other places throughout Thailand, we noticed the price. Range. We noticed the prices were a lot better in Bangkok. So um, personally, my advice to anybody would be if you, if you're going to be buying gifts and things like that, um, Bangkok, Bangkok is, is definitely place. the place to do it. A lot of people are willing to bargain there. They're, uh, so once again, if you are someone looking for deals and things like that, Bangkok, it, you're gonna feel right at home at Bangkok. There's a lot of uh, bargaining that goes on. Don't be afraid to bargain either. Yeah. Especially and, even with the tuk-tuks, we never really said, but you know, some guys would have different prices and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But you know, don't be afraid to bargain there. Just like down probably, or just like probably where you're from when you're looking for a taxi, some guys will say, you know, a flat rate yeah, or flat whatever. rate or whatever. So, yeah, you just be prepared for that. Um, but for the most part, it's very affordable. Uh, the food, the restaurants, great. Very good. Um, you know, shopping, like I said, uh, lots of different markets. There's a lot of like setups that happen overnight, like pop up shops and things like that. It's constantly changing. It's always, uh, yeah, that's one thing too that, you know, there's every single day it's something different. Like, the day before you might have seen a bunch of shirts and now you're gonna go back to that same spot and it'll be a bunch of pants yeah like well not even just that like that's pretty that's simply putting it but yeah. like yeah you'll you'll walk down a street um probably near your hotel or something while you're shopping and one day it's gonna look completely different because Always. literally these people they're just hustling they're, they're it's a hustle and bustle in bangkok so there's lots of little pop-up shops so the street that you walk down the day before might not look exactly how it did the next day But yeah, Bangkok, very busy, um, gives city you that, that, that cultural shock like we were saying. And um, definitely the city that never sleeps. Definitely a city that never sleeps. Like you always hear about cities like New York and things like that. Uh, big cities in North America that are, that are labeled uh, cities that never sleep. But for me, I think Bangkok takes the cake. It's like, wow, like, these guys are crazy. Still doing all this shit at three o'clock in the morning. So overall, yeah, Bangkok um, was intimidating at first, but just embrace it. Depending on where you're from, like us, we went across the world. Just embrace it, man. Embrace go with the flow. Yeah, you go know. with the flow. It's it, it was definitely a great experience. I feel like you, if you are going to Thailand and you want to see Thailand as a whole, you got to do Bangkok. Bangkok got to do it. Uh, anyway, guys. So like I was saying, we're gonna be breaking down the trip into pieces, and this is the first piece. So we'll be back. Until next time, guys. Until next time. As always, guys, stay virtuous. Peace, motherfuckers. Peace, guys.